Uh, good evening. I'm back again today. Uh, on, uh, with a bit of just a talk that we have been holding uh, for the past particular three days or four days. Um, and we just been talking about life in general and uh, the number of things that we then go through and then the challenges that we then face and, uh, and most times we just feel we want to give up we feel you know I, I can't continue I can't do this anymore um, the year was 2017 I was under a lot of pressure, and as I was under this lot of pressure, it was pretty much to do with work, it was pretty much to do with uh, ministry and business and trying to put all those things together. And um, because of all things that I was going through, I ended up developing a heart problem. And... Um, well, the heart problem developed and uh, I was then diagnosed with angina, which was um, continued to progress and until I then had um, a minor stroke. Um, and I remember my left side was not functioning very well by reason of the challenges that I was going through then and because of the heart problem. But pretty much the heart problem developed as a result of pressure and uh, not being able to handle the challenges that I was facing, not being able to handle everything that was around happening around me. And so uh, I got to the place where the pressure was a bit too much and the pressure uh, pulled me to a place where I couldn't share with anybody, I couldn't talk to anybody. Now, this is the very first thing that I want to say to you, especially to a lot of pastors out there. A lot of pastors are actually going through challenges right now, and the reason why we've got a lot of pastors dying, we've got a lot of men of God uh, probably at wit's end is because they are not sharing what they're going through with anybody. I want to encourage you uh, that don't allow things to build up on the inside of you. You just have to have find, find somebody that you can talk to, somebody you can confide in, somebody you can pour out to. And also, especially pastors, because the whole day you've got people walking into your office, people coming to you to just talk to you. And they are giving you, they are saying their problems, they are telling you their challenges. And in majority of those times, you have got an emotional overload because you, you're carrying a lot of people's burdens. And by reason of that, you sometimes will get into a place where you actually start going towards depression. Or you can actually feel very depressed because you, every day you're not hearing any good story. All the things that you're hearing are people's challenges and people's problems and people's sorrows and all those kind of things. So it, it kind of pushes you in a place where depression actually begins to creep in. Now, one of the things that shows you you are depressed, let me say this to you, is number one, when you start not caring about how you dress, when you stop caring about yourself, uh, the next thing you begin to gravitate towards wanting you to be always by yourself, you can then tell that you're going into depression. So depression can creep in because you're feeling a very heavy emotional load over your, yourself. And it can be a result of business. It can be a result of your marriage not going in the right direction. It can be a result of a number of things that you're going through now. Going back to my story, um, I eventually then had the stroke and for three solid months, uh, I, 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 I was bedridden, I couldn't do anything, I couldn't move, uh, I couldn't go anywhere. My, my life was at a standstill. Uh, things, my business went down because I was running up and down, 
and I couldn't run up and down anymore because I was sick. So I want you to understand that whatever you are carrying emotionally, the challenge with it is it will bring its effect into your life. It will bring its effect into your business. It will bring its effect into your financial uh, ability and capacity. So, uh, But it's all coming from the place where there is so much that you are carrying and there is so much that is within your heart. So uh, you, you have to let go. You, you have to learn to let go of, of the hurt, of the pain, of the challenges, of the things that you are putting through or that are coming through into your life because the pressure of it builds up to such a place where it, it can bring all kinds of sicknesses into your body. Now, majority of sicknesses that people have got are emotional rather than actually being physiological. So that's why then we, we really need to work on our emotions. We really need to work on, on yourself. You need to take time to take care of you, take care of your, of your own emotional needs because if you then don't, you, you're killing yourself. Uh, little by little so in the sickness that I was going through I go to a place where I gave up now th that's the reason why people die uh, I believe a lot of people that are sick can actually survive and make it and um, their lives can actually become better but the reason why people die is they give up you get to a place where you gave up I was in so much pain uh, that the only option that I thought was there was it's better to die um, I just got to the place where I said I can't bear this pain anymore because the pain that I, my body was in was just a bit excessive for me uh, and I just got to the place where I said I'm, I, I'm ready to die I'm ready to die so I remember calling one of my sons uh, and I said I want to talk to you because I, I believe I'm not going to make it. Um, so I started giving him instructions on what to do in terms of ministry and the direction to take the church and all the things that were on my heart that we needed to accomplish that I felt I wasn't going to accomplish anymore because my time had come. But my time had not yet come. But uh, I, I just felt my time had come because I was in so much pain and I was I was feeling I just had, had it and I wanted this over it. And done. So this is the place where most people find themselves in, you know, where you feel, I can't do this anymore. I can't continue going anymore. That's why a lot of people die. So a lot of people will die before their time because uh, they feel it's too much for me. It's too much for me. So on one particular night, I then, boom, died. And I remember having my first experience of, of death, actually. Um, but I remember one particular lady picking me up, putting me in a car, rushing me to the emergency room, and my spirit was out. I could actually literally see my body, but my spirit was out. So uh, it happened the second time, then it happened the third time, and I saw myself in heaven. And um, the, the gates of heaven were opened, and, um, and I began to, to, to move, and I could hear singing, which was so much from afar. And as I could hear that singing that was coming from afar, I wanted to quickly rush there. But there is something that happens in heaven where you um, you 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 actually don't walk. You are more of levitating in the air, and then you 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 going wherever you are going. So as I was going there, I then heard a voice that was calling. It says, "Mwana," and I I I recognize that I I I I, I recognize that voice. And then that voice was uh, Archbishop Ezekiel Goody's voice. So I turned around and I was facing and uh, in me was, what is Baba Goody doing in heaven? I know he's still alive. This place comes only people who have died. So what is this man doing here? So I turned around and then I started going back to uh, where the voice was coming from. And then something like a magnet pulled me to him and he said, Koruko and Akupi. Like, where are you going? And I said, Baba, I'm going there where I can see the glory of God, right there. That's where I am going. And then he said, Mwana, do you see how old I am? I said, yes, Baba. He says, do you see the countries that I've traveled to? I said, yes, Baba. I said, you are not going to die before you 
get to my age and you travel the countries that I've traveled? I said, yes, Baba. And then the heavens get opened again and it was like a magnet pulled me out and I was back on the earth and I was back in my body and uh, I was still in pain. But something then said to me, I have got something to live for. I've got something to live for. Uh, well, it took me another good six months for me to be completely healed. Uh, because healing is a process. But eventually I got healed and my body was, was back to its own self. And I went back on the pulpit and I was preaching. But there was something that was in me now that said, you know what? You, you have got something to live for. You have got something to look forward for. To for, look forward to. Um, there is this experience that you just have had where you're being told you're going to travel to over 140 countries and you, you're going to uh, live to over 90 years old. And so with that by itself, it gave me a, a desire and, a, 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 and, and something drawing me and saying to me, you know what, you, you, you can live, you can continue to go on, you can hold on because uh, there is more to life than what you're experiencing. So you might be experiencing this pain right now, but it's going to pass. But there is a greater dream and a greater vision and greater purpose that God has put you on the earth for. Now, I'm just saying this to, to somebody so that you can um, understand me that if you're going through something right now, there's a greater purpose for you. You probably just need to pick yourself up and understand that God can still heal your marriage, heal your life, heal your business, heal your ministry, heal you. But what you need to deal with is the emotional part of you because um, what you're all going through is just attacks of the enemy because before God formed you, you already knew who you're going to be. Like he said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I, 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 I called you, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. And so there is something great about who you are that the devil is fighting, that the devil does not want to see manifesting. But the only thing that you have to do is you, you have to keep on encouraging yourself, you know. You have to keep on holding on to the dream, to the purpose, to the desire, to the very things that, that, that have been deposited on the inside of you because eventually it, it, it's going to come to pass. Uh, but what the devil's plan is, is to kill you before your time. And the easiest way that the devil will kill you before your time is he will make you lose it. He will make you lose the desire. He will make you lose the... Uh, the, the desire to go on, the desire to live on. Like I said, people die, majority of them, not because it's their time, but they die because they, they feel, you know, it's over. I, I, I am done. I am done. What I am going through right now, I don't think I can carry it anymore. I don't think I can do this anymore. I don't think I can live one more day anymore. But what I want you to understand is there's a greater purpose for your life. There truly is a greater purpose for your life. Your, your life uh, cannot end because you of the things that you are going through. Your life cannot end because of the challenges that you're going through, even if it's the pain in your body. At some point, I know God is going to heal you. If it's, it's, it's finances that are, have run away and, and your business seems to be going down and nobody's picking you up and nobody's helping you, what I want you to understand is that somewhere, somehow, you just have to have something on the inside of you that says, I, 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 I have to hold on to God. Uh, when I look at the, the story of Paul, uh, and uh, they're being taken to Rome, and the Bible says they then had a shipwreck. And when they had the shipwreck, um, Paul says to everybody, look for a bit of piece of wood that you can hold on to. Look for something that is a little bit substantive that you can hold on to. They were holding on to pieces of wood of the boat that they had been in. So I want you to understand that they are, you, you have to look for something that you can hold on to. Uh, in most cases, your friends will desert you. In most cases, 
the people that you think are very dear to you that are supposed to be standing with you in most cases they actually will leave you uh and you will be all alone uh, i remember going through the three months period of being bedridden and um you you wishing for somebody to visit you and then there's nobody to visit you uh the very people that you were hoping that somewhere somehow they can stand with me they were not there but i i held on to something i held on to the vision i held on to the experience that i have had the encounter that i had had with baba guti in the in heaven is what i held on to and so every time i i i go through an experience in my life i go through a challenge in my life i go through something that will be happening in my life i i hold on to that dream that says i will travel to 140 countries i have traveled to about maybe 10 or 12 countries now i hold on to that vision that says uh i'm going to go to over 90 something years old i hold on to that one thing so there has to be a piece of wood that you hold on to sometimes it's it's hard to to find something to hold on to and sometimes the only thing you can hold on to is just one verse of scripture that you keep on holding on to and say, you know, I know my God is able, even if I'm going through all this stuff, but I know somewhere, somehow, my, my God is able. I, I look at the um, the three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and I, I, I wonder at times, I mean, how, how did they do that, you know, where they believe their God is able, but uh, the same God had allowed them to be defeated whilst they were in Jerusalem. The same God had allowed them to be taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. The same God had allowed them to to um, to be made eunuchs. So how then do they keep on holding on to something and believing that somehow this God is able to actually deliver them from uh, from the fairy finesse? But 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 they kept on holding on to something. I just want to say to somebody, I, I I am not sure what you're going on going through right now. I've been through my share, fair share of troubles and uh, turbulence and hardships and all kinds of situations. And like I've been sharing with you, been through a, a stroke and been through a, a, a major heart problem and all kinds of situations. But also at the same time, uh, I, I kept on holding on to something and I get got to the place where God healed me completely. Uh, I'm, uh, the stroke disappeared um some have looked at me especially when they look at me when i am talking and they say no we can tell something actually happened to you because my mouth still doesn't did not go back to its real original position but you can tell that i am completely healed so in spite of all that i've gone through god has been faithful but the only thing that has been there is uh, i have seen that you have to hold on to something so I want to encourage you tonight. I don't know what you've been through or what you're going through. You you just have to find something to hold on to. You just have to hold on to something. Uh, you have to find something. It might be small. It might be just one verse. Hold on to that verse. It might be a vision, a dream. It might be something. Uh, it might be your belief. Just hold on to something. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord keep on protecting you. If you really need prayer, please in inbox us. If you need to talk to somebody, please inbox us so that we can be able to talk to you. I pray and hope in this season and in this time, you're going to keep on holding on to something. Because I know God has got a greater purpose and a, God, a greater plan for your life. There is something so deep and great about you that God wants you to uh, manifest and accomplish in your life. So uh, you cannot die yet. You cannot die yet. You cannot die yet. You might have COVID right now, but you cannot die yet. You might have a heart problem. You cannot die yet. You might have going through all kinds of things. You cannot die yet. You have to accomplish the very purpose that God has given to you. You have to. There are books yet unwritten that you must write. There are songs yet unsung that you must sing. Samuel, uh, you. There are songs that are yet to be sung by you. I, I can see you are online. There, there are greater songs. There, are, there are podiums. In America that are yet to hear your gifting you and your wife's giftings there are places that you, there are, that are ought to hear your voice so you have to hold on no matter whatever the circumstance or the situation might be you just have to hold on may the good Lord bless you I pray that his favor and his grace will keep on shining upon you wherever you are 
that his grace may sit on you. In, Jesus, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll definitely be back tomorrow as I continue to take you through my journey that I pray and I hope will bless somebody. I want to encourage you to please continue to share the broadcast so that somebody else might be blessed, so that somebody else might be encouraged. God bless you. We'll see you definitely tomorrow. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.